Well, it's been almost a year since the 2016 election. It's been 10 months since the inauguration. But the idea of a Hillary Clinton presidency refuses to die. Oh, I hope Hillary runs. Is she going to run? I hope. Hillary, please run again. I mean, look, there are a lot of reasons she didn't win, including the fact that she was not good at what she did. Our next guest says Hillary Clinton may not even have to run again. She may be appointed president. Harvard Pre Professor Lawrence Lessig recently wrote a piece explaining that she can still become president, Hillary can, without waiting for 2020. What exactly is this plan? Professor Larry Lessig joins us now. Professor, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Tucker. So I want to take this seriously, both because you're a Harvard professor, so you're smart. I know you're a sincere person. It doesn't seem like, a, on its face, a very democratic plan, but how exactly could Hillary Clinton, having lost, become the president? Well, you look, I didn't write a piece predicting anything. Right. I wrote a piece in response to a question, and the question mm -hmm. I got was, what happens if it's shown that there was a conspiracy to steal the election? Um, and what I said was, I'm not even sure I think I believe that. There's no evidence of that, not enough to actually right. uh, uh, speculate about it in public. But if that is true, if it's shown, right. then, uh, then what should happen? And, and I think, you know, the fundamental point that if you steal the election, you have to give it back is something we all be, should be able to agree on. I don't know why there should be much argument about that. All I was trying to explain is what are the steps that would actually happen um, if this, in fact, were the first thing that happened? So, number one... Uh, if it's shown without uh, doubt that there was a conspiracy to steal, which is different from lots of other reasons you might impeach a president. This is a very particular one. Right. The president should resign. Um, and if the president should resign, so too should the vice president resign. And if that happens, then under the presidential succession statute, Paul Ryan becomes president. And that's where the hard question comes. Should Ryan remain president uh, as somebody who's inherited because of this theft or should he do what I think is uh, actually the moral thing to do here, which is the right thing to do, which is to correct for the theft? And he could correct for the theft very easily under the 25th Amendment by um, nominating um, uh, a Democrat, Hillary Clinton, to be his vice president and then step aside. So, so it's a speculation based on a question that was presented to me hundreds of, well, not hundreds of times. I'm a law professor. Tens of times by people writing right. emails to me about it. So, I, I, a couple of things. When you say theft, do you mean literally theft, it could, if it could be shown that the Kremlin somehow controlled the tallies in the voting machines? Or is it theft in the sense in which it's used in Washington now, that somehow sophisticated Russian propaganda convinced a lot of right-wing mouth breathers in a couple of key states to vote against their own interests in selecting Trump? Which of those? Is it propaganda yeah, no, I, or actual I, I, theft? No, it's actual theft. And it's not just actual theft. I mean, if, if you showed that the Russians actually controlled the uh, voting booths and flipped the election, but Trump had nothing to do with it in the sense that you can't show there was a conspiracy, right. I don't think there's anything that hangs on Trump. The only thing I was talking about was the, you know, extreme case, the unthinkable case, where there's a, an agreement, a conspiracy, working together between a foreign government and an election and a, and a campaign to bring about the actual changing of votes or, um, you know, something at that level to lead to the flipping of the election. That's right. the hypothetical I was trying to address. Yeah, I mean, that's so hypothetical, though. And by the way, just for the record, if that was ever shown, I mean, I would be leading the charge against anyone who would do something. I mean, that's totally immoral, and that would be a subversion of, of our course. democracy. Of that's, course. That's why, I, that's why but, I'm kind of surprised by the outrage. Well, Jay, well here's, <laughs> here's the thing. I, that's so unlikely that it almost seemed like you were writing a species of pornography for people who are desperate to believe that Trump's presidency is basically illegitimate and saying to people in your own kind of propaganda, like, this could actually happen. You know what I mean? Like, you're writing escapist literature for unhappy lefties kind of thing. Well, I'm not sure that's what I wrote, right? Because the very first pa second paragraph of what I wrote said, I don't know if I believe it, uh, believe it. I certainly haven't seen clear evidence of it. And I don't think it's appropriate to speculate about whether there's clear evidence of it. But I get tons of pe email from people asking, what if there was such a conspiracy? So, you know, I set it up to say, I'm not saying this is true. I'm just trying to, you know, there are a lot of people who say, well, can we have a new election? Or can the Supreme Court force the uh, Electoral College to vote again? What I was trying to say is, look, none of those things are possible under our Constitution. Right. You can't have a new election. You can't have a new Electoral College vote. All of that is fixed. There's no way to go back. Um, but there is this path, given the way the 25th Amendment works, 
um, that it could actually work. Now, you know, again, not a prediction, not yeah, an argument no, I, for, I get not it, a but plan. wouldn't it just be better? I mean, it's it's a little like saying, you know, well, I'm not look, I'm not saying the Israelis are behind 9/11, but just theoretically, wouldn't it just be better to say, look, using the moral authority you have as a tenured Harvard law professor, that's not true. Actually, there's literally zero evidence that the Russians got into our voting machines at any level. We've looked into this; it's not true. And like, move on. Wouldn't it be better to do that? Well, I, you know, as soon as the actual ongoing investigation of what happened is finished, then, right. then yeah, I think you're exactly what you're saying is true. But what I started the piece by saying is that there's this chatter that's, you know, coming up. And again, it could just be conspiracy theories. I don't know. I don't really care. The point, uh, again, I wasn't like making a press release and coming out and trying to do some big event drawing attention to this. I was just writing a blog post in response to a question. I know, but you're Larry um, Lessig. You're, the, the, you're the famous guy. You know what I mean? Like, people pay attention to what you, you're not just writing a blog post. I mean, you know, people pay attention to what you say because you're smart and you have this position of authority. Let me ask you this final thing. Can you understand the perspective of the Trump voter looking on at this saying, you know, I voted for the guy, I knew his flaws, but I did it because I felt like he was better than the option. And ever since I voted for him, I've been attacked as immoral by the elites in Washington, Boston, New York, and Los Angeles calling me immoral and trying to take the election away from me. And I'm, I'm offended by that. Can you see that perspective? Oh, my gosh. Of course I can, Tucker. Yeah. It's not just to see the perspective. I mean, I, I completely understand there's a segment of the people who voted for Donald Trump who were so deeply frustrated with what they perceive to be the deeply corrupted way that Washington works. And exactly. I'm one of those people that's been on that charge, like screaming this as much as I possibly can. I completely get it. And I am the first person to say I wish that all of these questions would be bracketed and put to one side or answered at least. Right. Um, but in the context of this ongoing investigation, I don't think it's to be placed on me that I'm answering a question about what could happen, you know, something if it came out of the investigation. All yeah. I'm saying is, here's what could happen if right. something came out of the investigation. Unlikely to happen. As a non-law professor, I'm going I'm to rule on this one. Professor, thank and you I'm for gonna, joining I'm us. I'm going to support you on that. It's <laughs> unlikely to happen, but, you know, it's what could happen. Thank you. Thank you.